Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi and today we are building a multi-ping deck based on, among others, Helga Sinclair, Femme Fatale. So whenever you quest with this character, you can deal 3 damage to any character you like as long as it's damage. Now pinging something for 3 on a quest is a fantastic ability, but the requirement is that the character has to be damaged, which is a heavy cost. Uh, or more a restrictive option. But it's still a pretty powerful effect, so let's see if we can make it happen. Also, we need to actually quest with Helga, so normally we'd have the player and then wait a turn. But there's a couple of shifting targets for Helga. If we look, we have a nice vengeful partner here, which is a shifting target with a decent effect, kind of a Cheshire cat. And Helga here, that's essentially a 4-4 as a challenger. As a 3-drop, it's decent. So we now have two nice shifting targets. And we can add some space goo. Some morphs. Now we have a ton of shifting targets for Helga. Okay, so with, if we can shift her, then we can quest on the same turn and do that fantastic smash, essentially on a quest, which is pretty good. But we need ways to damage some of our opponent's characters. But before we get to that, let's double down on the mechanic simply because, well, that's what make, makes things fun, right? There's this card called Robin's Bow that allows us to deal one damage to a damaged character or location. And whenever we have a Robin that quests, we can ready the bow and do the ping again that gets pretty fun. You get to do a bunch of different pings if, as long as you have Robins on the battlefield. If you have multiple Robins bow, you can do multiple pings. If you have Elga uh, with the Robins bow, you can now do four points of damage, distribute the damage, all the cool stuff. Okay, and Robins bow requires us to be playing some Robin hoods. That's no problem because the Robins are already so good. And if we look, we're going to be playing the King of the Robins, Champion of Sherwood, yeah, I know I was, I, last time I said I was going to avoid it in my next deck, but hey, this is going to be a Robin Hood tribal deck. That should get the exemption, right? We're also going to be playing four copies of Robin the Capable Fighter, who has the ability, actually we'll be playing three copies. He has the ability of just exert, do one damage on anything, not damage. So the Capable Fighter can do the initial point of damage and then Elga or the bow comes in and piles up the extra damage to take down characters. We're only playing three because he's an inkable. And we'll have other Robins. We'll be playing four copies of the one drop. And we'll also be playing four copies of the six drop Robin. Because what's better than questing for four is resetting the bow as you're questing for four. So we'll keep this as a Helga Robin tribal deck, basically. That's all about dealing extra damage to already damaged characters. So now, that's what remains. <clears throat> a bit of card draw and damaging characters that are undamaged. So what are our options here? Well, we already have three copies of a Robin Hood that can do it. We're going to go after the what I consider the obvious choice for the deck. Some Tinkerbells, already a powerful card. And she puts that initial point of damage across the board. Naming, enabling us to go pew 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 with our bow and Helgas if we have them. <coughs> Another nice option for doing that initial ping of damage comes in the shape of Hans 13th in line. And if he quests, pew, one damage is something, and then you can pile on. I, I used to really like Hans, he just didn't quite make the cut. He was borderline with the first chapter and then got forgotten and some vault that no one really looks at. But 3-3 three, three, quest for 2 that gets an initial ping in is perfect for this strategy. And I think he's actually a fairly decent card, just on his own, which is what we want here. There's also another card that's good for the initial ping of damage, and that's a beast. But one, one that doesn't see much play. The Forbidden Recluse, you play him, you deal 1 damage to something. Perfect for this deck. Also, pretty decent stat line as a 3-4 that quests for 1. 
prefer a bit more, but he does kind of what we need, and he's inkable, which is an important factor. All right, 47 cards. Well, <coughs> we're looking for, what are we looking for? We have one one drop. I'd like a bit more one drops. So let's start by adding a pair of Captain Hooks. Bring our total to six. That's pretty solid. Our two drops are fine like that. Our three, we only have, well, we have two, two, three drops. Let's add a couple of t baby Tinkerbells. Just to round up our list a bit. A couple of the tiny tactician. All right, that brings us to 51. <coughs> One of the problems with these cards is that we, we do really want the Robin, the bow and Helga, but they're all uninkables. And another card that I'd really like to include is grab your sword because again, it's two damage to everything and it sets up our extra pings very nicely. But I don't think I can afford that many more uninkables. There's also a whole new world. I need some card draw here. I, I could probably go after the tragic hero beast, but I want to try something different. And I'm going to go after a couple of whole new worlds here. We have a lot of shifting, which is going to empty our hand pretty fast. So I'm going to afford a whole new world in tree copies. But because of that, I'm going to pull a stop and say, I will not be playing Grab Your Sword, even though it would be a fantastic fit for this deck, simply because I don't think I can afford the uninkable slots. I really want to play these three, and I think a whole new world is going to provide more value for the deck than Grab Your Sword. But I still think that we're quite heavy on uninkables here. So I'm going to try and mitigate that with Strike a Good Match. Just draw two, discard one. If you have one of these dead uninkable cards in your hand, it almost becomes a draw two type of spell, uh, functionally at least for a limited time. It's a song, so it has some nice value, and it's also inkable, so don't worry about it too much. It's the card that I'm going to be inking most of the time, but in a tight spot or when your draw doesn't line up, you can actually use it to <coughs> readjust what you have in hand. And then I want to have some beasts. Beast Relentless. Well, it doesn't go with the pre damage or post damage plan, but if our deck is stock full of pings, and we get to ready Beast Relentless whenever we deal damage to an opposing character. That means we get a ready Beast Relentless a lot. With Robin's Bow, it becomes quite ridiculous. I mean, imagine you have two Robin's Bow, a Robin Hood and Beast Relentless. Quest, ping, quest, ping, quest. Quest with the Robin, ready to bows. And that's two more readiness for Beast Relentless, who just quested for 10 during the turn. And he might have gotten even a combat or two in because he's relentless. Anyways, that's the dream. Uh, let's see if we can make it happen. As I now realize that I'm at 62 cards. So let's see what we can cut. <coughs> I'm happy with the top end. Four drops are nice. Maybe we can cut a couple of Helgas. I prefer Morph over Elga because Morph gives us access to Robin, Elga, or Tinkerbell. And I mean, they're both essentially two ones that are shifting targets. Don't want to cut more into the Keepable Fighter because I think he's pretty good. So yeah, that's going to be our list. The Damage Pros is what I'm going to call it. And all that remains is to see the deck in action with some games coming right up. We're playing against Sapphire Ruby with our Helga Robin deck. All right, we do have Robin's bow. We have at least one Robin, a pair of Helgas and a Hans. 
This seems fine. Let's just keep it as is. I want to see what we can do with that Robin's bow. Well, first things first, let's send away the big Robin. Play a small one. Always a scary card to see on the opponent's side of the board because you never know when Big Steel Robin is going to come out of play. Flavor Sham goes to the ink. Opponent develops their brain, tries to find a good answer for our little Robin. Here I have a choice between Helga and Morph. I think I'm going to go with the flexibility of Morph. Especially since there's no steel for our opponents, so we don't have to worry too much about one damage pings. Yeah, so we can deal one damage to a damaged character or location, which right now is not the best. Oh, Gaston comes in. Probably won't need that morph. I'd like to keep that Robin alive if I can. Specifically Robin to trigger that Robin's bow. So for now we'll land the Helga and we'll leave the slightly odd just morph exerted which should confuse our opponent because the opponent should say, well, if you have the big Robin, you could just use Morph and you're a true opponent, but I can't use Robin's bow, which I'm sure the opponent doesn't expect or maybe hasn't read because it's a weird and common type of card you read once and forget about until you decide to make video content on Orcana, and you're like, hmm, that could be fun. All right, so Hans goes away. We have Maui's fish hook on a battlefield. Now I'll take the opportunity to quest, even though we're probably going straight into a Maui. If it's if there's a Maui, odds are it's going to go after Helga, or if they go after Robin, then Helga can take out the Maui. Hans, thirteenth in line. Actually, we're going to play the, the bow soon. Flavor Sham comes in, eats the fish hook, draws some cards. All right, all right. <coughs> I really want to land my Robin's bow. So Hans is going to quest. Hans triggers. We get a ping Flavor Sham. Then we get a Robin's bow. One more to Flaversham. Quest with Robin. Trigger to bow. Fire off another arrow. Quest with St. Clair. And that'll be the turn. Pew, pew, pew. Just the way we drew it. Except that Flaversham has way too much health. Now there's a Maui taking down Hans, and her board state is no longer a threat. Or do you pull in place something? And leaves Hans alone. That's the hope. Opponent is reading our cards. As they should. Yes, there are more uses to Robin Beloved Outlaw than being a tutu and being an outlaw. And allowing you to play your Cyber Dragon. I mean your Big Robin on top of it. Flaversham quests. Eats the quill. Draws more cards. Always more cards with Flaversham. Little does our opponent know that we have a whole new world. We get a quest with everyone. And take out Flaversham for free. Isn't that awesome? 
Now we do have to sacrifice our ink. Again, ping, ping, ping. Because I love to say it. And I don't have a singer, so hard gas, whole new world. Phone's on Ruby, so they're likely to be, be prepared. But I guess I don't really care about that extra Robin. So let's cast it. Force a be prepared. Does our opponent have it? Tamatoa goes off, becomes ink. Thinks it's an octopus. Be prepared number one. All right, we find strike a good match. Don't really need that right now. I'd rather go with the double robin play. I've seen our opponent plays a certain number of Lady Tremaines. I do want to be careful about that a bit. McDuck Manor coming in. <coughs> Champion of Sherwood looking strong. That usually does. Opponent goes after the McDuck Manor and a Flaversham eating the hook. That's a draw more cards so we can whole new world you into oblivion. I'm tempted to just play the, the big beast here. Beast. Enters the battlefield, pings you for one. Ping you for one. Quest and ping you for one. And I want a quest. That Robin's bow is just doing a lot of fun stuff right now. I don't think I need more pressure. If I land Helga, next turn our opponent be prepares. Be pre blah, blah. Yeah, we're in trouble. So I'm going to leave the board as is. If the opponent be prepares, be prepared as is, then we'll Hans Helga. Yeah, I think so. Double threat, also Hans with Robin's bow is pretty potent. I definitely want a double spell. Maleficent Dragon. Hadn't seen you in a while. Goodbye, Robin. Hello, replacement card. Or not. Vanished by combat, maybe? Yes, banished in a challenge. Mm. Disappointing. The Robin that does it all doesn't quite do it all. Ooh, another bow. That is fun. Can play a beast and threaten lethal. Yeah, that beast must be answered. And the opponent already played a Maleficent Dragon. So I think my chances are decent. I'll send away Helga, so we, we still have the Robin and Bow next turn. Quest for one. I can ping out Flaversham. Then Maleficent has to take some damage to take out Robin. Or there, if there's a Maui, it still has to take damage. So we can use the double bows next turn. Alright, let's take out Flaversham. 
also gets us to 17, dangerously close to 20. Although we do have a Relentless Bees that can quest for a ton and a half next turn. Looking through the wrong set. Going through, even though it's the right set. Beast, beast, beast. Ah, there's another Maleficent Dragon coming down. Takes out our beast. My opponent has to go for combat, I imagine. I'd be quite happy if you go for the beast. Opponent wisely chooses the robin. Wise choice, healing Maleficent. Gonna land our Robin Hood. <coughs> I think we want to land a bow too. And I'll use the bows to ping McDuck's Manor. Although there seems to be an implementation problem. Yeah, I think it's damaged character or undamaged or damaged location. I think there's a little bug here. Okay. I get it. These cards aren't overly played. Now we're threatening lethal, forcing our opponent to play an answer. Opponent does not have said answer. At least doesn't seem to have it. Gaston tries to dig. When you dig, there's always a chance. Opponent okay. sings to be prepared. There was a chance. This game is not over yet. I would feel better if I could send some damage to Megduck Manor, though. Gaston comes in. Strike a good match. Just what we needed, because we can ink it. Play a pair of threats. Ball is in your court opponent. Can you stop us one more time? Lady Tremaine comes in. Gonna sacrifice Robin. We find another copy of Robin's bow. That's uninkable, so we're going to play it. Good 19. Ping a Lady Tremaine. And then triple bow for triple damage. Pew, pew, pew. Arrows flying all over the place. But we're still in a very precarious position here. Depends on our next draw. Because Gaston has to challenge Hans. One will gain two more lore off of the McDuck Manor. I don't think the opponent is going to play a five quester. There's not very many of those. Tamato would chain popsicles, maybe. Lucky Dimes actually a pretty close 
Wait to do it. Strike a good match. Draw two, discard one. Discard a whole new world. Do you have an answer for a morph? Just don't want to... I could have kept the whole new world, but then if the opponent has an answer... Well, the opponent is going to draw into an answer, and with Lucky Dime, it's unlikely that I'll live to see another turn. So I'd rather try out the morph and hope that the opponent doesn't have Madame Medusa or Lady Tremaine. Or a Maleficent Dragon. Which was possible. Land Beast. And the opponent has it off of the Lucky Dime. We get stuck. 19. 19. So close. And if our bows could have pinged the McDuck Manor, it would have been really, really close. And it was really, really close, but we lost. We're playing against Steel Amethyst. Beast, good match with a hook, double Sinclair, small Sinclair, and a Robin Hood. Gonna send away one of the big Helgas. The rest seems fine. All right, and we gotta go first. Gonna ink our big beast, land the captain, and pass the turn. So what we want to set up is a nice Helga Sinclair, Femme Fatale. Never she quest deal three damage to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Don't really need strike a good match. Land. Small Helga St. Clair and pass the turn. Small Helga, whenever she's challenged and banished, we banish the challenging character. <coughs> but she's just the one quester, which makes her subpar, at least on her own. Hans, I really wish I could land Hans right now. Ping down that blue fairy. That doesn't seem to be in the card, so we'll continue accumulating a little bit of lore. Just don't have anything better to do, and our opponent doesn't have anything too threatening going on. Blue fairy can trade with Helga, which would be fine. Ooh, hard casted friends on the other side. So slow start for our opponent. Goes the quest with the evasive fairy. Quest with our own characters. And land Hans. Hans is quite a big threat for that blue fairy. Since we can quest and take down. Quest and conquer. Opponent is pondering their next move. Ooh, Fairy Godmother. I love that card. Let Storm Rage on. It's going to take out Alga. It's okay. I probably would have traded the Blue Fairy with Alga, with Alga since Blue Fairy is going to go down to Hans, anyways. Well, now we have kind of a sticky situation for our opponent. Because whenever Hans quests, he can ping something for one. Whenever Elga quests, she can ping something that's damaged for three. At least I think that's what she does. Helga, Elga, Helga. Yeah, whenever she quests, three damage to damage character. So with Hans and Helga, we can ping anything for four. Some restrictions apply. Like, but uh, for example, we can't target a, I want to say a hexproof ward character. 
but a fairy godmother is unfortunately going to go down to her pair of evildoers who just pew pew and you're out. My opponent's playing steel, so there's not very much that the opponent can do in terms of removal, but the, the combo of Helga Hans was just too much for our opponent who decides to resign. We are playing against Sapphire Ruby. Probably some flower shams. Be prepared. These things. So we open with seemingly standard steel hand. A couple of robins. Not the usual ones. Send send some of them back. Keep the tinker bells. Hook Robin will ink the one we don't want. Find a Helga, a Robin, and another hook. Now we find a beast. So we have too many Captain Hooks. Gonna ink one, land our baby Robin. Pass turn back. Ooh, and a Queen of Hearts comes in. It's an interesting pickup. One turn to Helga St. Clair. And we'll leave Robin as a threat he is on the battlefield. That's what remind what Helga does. Nothing personal, but when she's challenged and banished, she banished a challenging character. Kind of what the Cheshire Cat would do. Except she's not as tough. She only quests for one. But she's a vengeful partner. To the bigger Elga. Which we don't have right now. Sometimes it's just about threatening the shift. Not about the shift itself. Queen of Hearts goes to quest. So we'll telegraph our hand here a little bit. Well, let's ink the big tank. Then we can shift the big robin. I was thinking about playing the small Tinkerbell, but taking out the Queen of Hearts seems like a wise decision, especially since we gain the lore. Enable Elga to quest. There's a reason big robin is oppressing the metagame. Or at the very least, being an important player in it. It's a lot of stats for something that can be played on turn three. Opponent decides to ramp. So we find a Relentless Beast. I don't need two Relentless Beasts. Let's play the big beater. And go to quest. Now I don't like wasting a ping on Mickey Mouse. But hey, you gotta play the cards in your hand. The other option was to land a small Tinkerbell, threatening a shift larger Tinkerbell. Especially since we currently don't have a nice turn five play. Another Mickey. Opponent's gonna have a lot of ink. Scary amounts. A morph. Alright, so the opponent's in be prepared range. So have to be careful about that. I think our move is to just hold the morph. Worst case scenario is going to be ink for our beast, Relentless Beast next turn. A 
sensing a bee prepared. There it is. Uh, we'll land our relentless beast now. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have Lady Tremaine. That would hurt. And pretty much be game. Yeah. Yeah, that hurts. The classic Ruby 1-2 punch. Ramp, be prepared, Lady Tremaine or Medusa, depending on what the opponent plays. That's how Ruby got popular with the Mims and the Mauis and all that good stuff. Let's just land our Tinkerbell. What are the odds that the opponent has a second Lady Tremaine? Non zero, which it's bigger than what I would like. The disappointments. The carnage. And Lady Tremaine's just laughing it up, petting their cats. I'm not sure we can come back from this. Which I'm pretty sure we can't. Point heals the ladies. One of Lady Tremaine. Whole New World is a good way to come back from it. <clears throat> but I really need to sing it. So I'm going to throw away this I can't shift Robin all right I really need I really need to have tempo when I play this otherwise we're gonna get destroyed on the backswing then again I need to land something pretty soon otherwise we're gonna lose anyways Maui comes in just threatening to bully us. Strike a good match. More fodder for our ink. We'll land our Robin. Also, technically, Robin's a pretty, pretty big threat here. I need to remember what that fish hook does. Gains evasive or gives combat power to a character. It's all right, I guess. I always think that it has some kind of exertion mechanism. All right, so what's the play here? We can take out Lady Tremaine, then Maui comes back at Robin, takes it out. But then we have to hard cast the whole new world. I'd rather sing it. Sing it, see what we can find. Ooh, double Medusa. That could hurt. We can still ink. So we can play for nine. I think we just want to drop as much stuff on the board as possible. Which is probably Tinkerbell. A Robin. And a two drop Elga. Is that the way we get most stuff in? And I like the Robin simply because it sets up Robin's bow. 
We'll see. The opponent has a pretty potent turn ahead of them. Maleficent Dragon hurts, hurts like a truck. In a standard Ruby controls everything type of way. <clears throat> then we're in big trouble. Now he gets healed. So he can take out Robin and stay alive. means we no longer have a nice way to sing a whole new world. Need to top deck a Helga. We find ourselves a Robin Hood. So we can shift Robin, play a bow, bow takes out Maui. We take out Lady Tremaine. No, I need to take out both Lady Tremaines. <coughs> I don't think we have, we have a way out of this. Let's go after the pings anyways. Goodbye, Maui. Although I guess I should have pinged Lady Tremaine. Then the Helga can take it out and we can live another turn. Well, it's not going to be a nice other turn anyways. Let's just make it closer. 13-17 and concede the game. Be prepared into Lady Tremaine's and then the Maleficent was just too much. We couldn't survive it. We're playing against Emerald Amethyst. Let's see what we can do with Robins. There's one Robin, two Robins, three Robins. And they strike a good match. Seems like a pretty good hand. Going second is a bit of a downside. But Robin to Robin to Robin into a whole new world. Because this world has too many Robins. Maybe. Seems like a good plan. Ray. All right. Big evasive threat from our opponent. Let's send away the last Robin from our playset. And open up with the beloved outlaw. I'll highlight the capable fighter one, Merlin, who bites the dust, goes to the ink for our opponent. No! Ursula, the taker of a whole new world. Actually, we do have two songs, so the opponent could leave us with a whole new world. That's unlikely. There it goes. Well, that wasn't great. And we find a second copy of Strike a Good Match. We're going to ink one. Hopefully the opponent will put us on no songs. I think we can quest with Small Robin here. Where is this Robin? There it is. Robin Keepable Fighter. So if the opponent challenges our beloved outlaw, then we get a ping Ursula. No! The opponent tried it anyways and hits strike a good match. These Ursulas are terrorizing our hand. All right. I don't think we're gonna get to play that big beast. So we might as well go all out with our characters. Have Robin take out Ursula. 
Gain two lore and you can quest, my friend. It's not often that we use that Robin the quest. And now the big Ursula. This one means trouble. But the other ink is Amethyst, so Mother Knows Best is probably the worst thing the opponent can play. Land Hans. Pick out that second small Ursula. And we probably want to start poking at the big Ursula. Poke! One point of damage. That's what this deck is all about, just ping points of damage. Opponent decides to draw four. So they've got friends on the other side and friends on the inside too, apparently. Just lots of friends, feeding them lots of cards. So we're stuck with a single puny card in hand to our opponent's seven. If there was any time when I'd wish I'd had a whole new world, it's now. Okay, there's probably other times. It's just overall a good card most of the time. Mim Fox. That's a bit problematic. Because Mim Fox still has enough power to take out a Robin. Oh, Mim, Mim Snake bounces the Fox. Not exactly sure why, but. Why not? Is probably the better question. But well, we've got two characters on board, so we're gonna ping. Ping and quest, ping and quest. Land another Robin. And hope that the expensive legendary can carry us. It's not the purpose of the deck, but when you're in a tough spot, relying on good cards is a good way. Bounce, bounce, bounce. <clears throat> and that'll give us a card off of Robin's ability, which is another Robin. When you have Champions of Sherwood, do you really need to play anything else? We have our Hans 13th in line. Seeing Borderline play with the first chapter. I've always liked that card. I'll, I'll land the new Robin. Keep on questing and pinging. And the opponent, the opponent needs a mother knows best now. Although it would hurt significantly. They need more friends. Opponent says, who cares about board presence? I'm going to outdraw you into oblivion. And they're succeeding at that pretty well, I must say. <coughs> Rafiki. All right. And a Mim, Mim Fox. Emerald Amethyst doesn't have very good control tools when it's that far behind. So much that Big Elsas can do, but only so much. Ooh, and a cute little bunny. You know I have a pair of foxes on the battlefield? And foxes eat bunnies. No land Helga. Which, and I realize I really should have challenged at Ursula. I really should have. Although it didn't matter. So, shoulda, coulda, woulda, didn't matter. And that's the game. We're playing a mirror match. Steel.
and emerald versus emerald and steel. We're going first. We have a pair of algas, a robin morph. So I think we want to play morph on two, Helga on three, and the rest is history. Yeah, I'll just keep everything. Have some nice incubility potential with this hand. Opponent inks a Cinderella, and we have five second Tinkerbell. So she's going to go straight to the ink as we land a morph. Slightly telegraphing that we're holding a Tinkerbell. So with a morphing play, it's mighty morphing Tinkerbell time. Although we have Robin as well. Lots of good options at our disposal. For now, it's Mr. Googly Eyes. <clears throat> Porn wants to go discard mode. Well, we want to land that Tinkerbell pretty fast. For now, we're going to ink our beast and land Helga Sinclair. Steel Emerald. I don't see really any rush character, and I'm okay trading with Bucky. Or at least I'm going to telegraph or tell my opponent that I'm okay trading with that Bucky. But I'd much rather just shift a tink. Get rid of Mr. Bucky next turn. Opponent is tempted but does not go double Bucky. We'll instead land Ursula and takes out a morph. All right. If that's what you want to do, opponent, then that is what shall happen. On four. I think we want to land our morph here. Bit more potential. And Helga will remain on the defense. It's tempting to quest, because Ursula is more, more likely to sing. Mother knows best. Or let the storm rage on. Neither of which I'm too fond of being on the receiving end of. On the plus side, we'll, we'll get to land a robin next turn. Let's see. Opponent is picking which song to sing. Let the storm rage on is the song of choice. Double pings to Helga, or do you split them between Morph and Helga? In which case, Helga will be able to take out Ursula. Then it's going to take us two cards to take out Ursula, who will have generated a huge card advantage. So it's a lose lose for us. No two ways about it. And the opponent still has their ink available for this turn. Ursula, as dominant as ever. Let's see if we can come back from this. I think the deceiver of all deserves a spotlight. Another storm rage on. Ouch. Well, I guess I needed to bring my umbrella because the storms were raging. Now what do we want? Do we ink the beast or do we ink Tinkerbell? As much as I like Beast Relentless, oh, especially in this matchup, I think we're going to ink Tink. Let's try to have some fun with Beast Relentless. For now, we're going with Robin. Slightly sturdier threat. If he gets destroyed by combat, we draw a card. Although that seems unlikely, considering the amount of cards the opponent has. There's always a whole new world of possibilities that 
could be drawn at any moment, which would kind of reset the board. So that'd be good. Opponent on seven cards. Then along came Zeus. Oh, well, Ursula can't sing it, so the opponent can't double cast it. Just bam, five damage. Take that, Robin. At least Robin's still alive. I dare you to quest with your Ursula. Opponent declines there. All right, in which case we'll take the quest and land a relentless beast. One of the highlights of Rise of the Floodborne. The beast that never gives in, never gives up, never gives left or right. Just always has a second win ready to come back and back again. Always ready, I guess. I guess that sums it up. Tinkerbell. Ouch. That was the plan to get rid of a Robin. Beast Triggers, which and actually Beast Triggers when opponent's in character is damaged. All right, so Beast doesn't trigger. I'll play Helga. Setting up a pretty nice next turn. Unless the opponent double casts Mother Knows Best, in which case we are Caputo. We have Elga, the elegant Elga. One of five cards in hand to our lonesome one. Another beast which synchronizes with our first beast and different alternate version of Bell. And that's what multiverses are for. Then along came Zeus, and hijacked the party yet again. Four damage, it's too much. Goodbye, Elga. It's a lot of removal. At least our, our beast relentless is still a decent threat on the board. Phone goes to quest. Quest with Tinkerbell. Oh, quest with Ursula. I smell a window of opportunity. All right, well, we're going to quest with beast. Play a second beast, ping Tinkerbell. Beast readies. Beast will take out Ursula. Beast dealt damage. Beast readies. And Beast gets to take out Tinkerbell. And suddenly we don't look in a just as terrible a position as we used to a second ago. Now have the bigger character on Battlefield or slightly behind on Ink, slightly ahead on Lore with Helga Sinclair left in hand the forbidding recluse comes in clutch okay it's really beast relentless that did most of the work as the opponent's just spamming robin hoods Ooh, isn't that nice well i think i want to threaten with Helga. <clears throat> then pass the turn. So I don't want Robin to draw the card. So I want to set up an, an assured if you quest. I send my beast into it. And then Helga gets to ping it down. Don't want a Robin Robin double hit. Although. There's no. Yeah, maybe I could have quested. 
Maybe I should have quested. But like Celine Dion once said, this game will go on. All right, so we can take out Robin, but now we have another threat with Beast, the tragic hero. I still think we have to do it, right? Hit Robin, quest, generate some lore, ping of doom, bye. Assassinated. I don't land a big Robin, because we don't have any way to ping the tragic hero. It's a strong card. Definitely a strong card. Opponent can double hit Helga to get rid of her. Although maybe they've drawn more mischievous spells to throw her away. Highlight it, but I assume that most people are familiar with the tragic hero. So good, so strong. Ursula Deceiver finds our Helga in hand. Or as I like to call her, the handheld Hel Helga. Ah, grab your sword. Means that puny little Robin here is going to be able to trade with Helga. I have to do it, right? We need something like a Tinkerbell. Someone's considering sending Beast on Alga. Not sure why. Yeah. Robin. One's considering questing with Beast. So we find Strike a good match. I'm not overly pleased with our cards in hand, so let's draw. We find a big Robin. Decisions, decisions. Do I ink the big Robin to play a small Robin? And then quest, give our opponent two cards. I don't think I can give our opponent the tempo of not playing anything. So I'm going to land a Robin. I'm going to quest because that, that Robin quests for a ton. I'll give our opponent some cards. It's not great. But I don't think I win the game by going challenging the beast. There's always the option of our opponent drawing a lot of blanks, which this is not. All right, same relative combat happens as our daydreamer Robin wasn't ready for the tragic prince. Find small Robin. I think we have to take out the tragic prince here. Then we're leaving ourselves open for the Tinkerbell hit, which is bound to happen. So we'll, we'll hold uh, the other Robin so the Tinkerbell just can't ping it. Ursula is too weak, so it really has to be a Tinkerbell. Or Raging Fire. Because after getting electric electrocuted by a bunch of Zeus's lightning, Raining Fire is what we need. Sudden Chill picks out Robin, who apparently was doomed from the start. Now we're in bad shape. We need another one of those four questing Robins. 
Helga could be interesting. We need something to ping for two, which I'm not sure we have. One just lands everything, tries to close out the game. Hans is wonderful in combo with Elga. But there's not there's nothing we can do to stop our opponent from winning immediately. And so we'll lose the game. But that was a pretty good comeback, considering our opponent had a double Let the Storm Rage on early on. But I'll take it. It's now time for the pose game analysis. I hope that you've enjoyed the damage pros. Uh, the deck was gimmicky and gimmicky fun. I particularly enjoyed getting the lock when we had Hans and Elga and if the opponent played anything we just ping it for four every turn in a reliable fashion. That that was really nice I must say for us not for the opponent. Outside of that well we're still playing some powerful cards I mean Robin to Robin uh, and the Tinkerbells just they pull their weight quite nicely. The Uninkables are a bit of a problem and um, Alga would be so much better if she was inkable. Same thing with Robin's bow, it would actually be playable uh, if it was inkable. Um, overall, I think Hans Alga combo might be worth playing. Uh, the Robin's bow is just a fun card. Uh, I mean, it play it plays okay. It's it's a casual deck. I'm not sure how much it could get improved. We need a bit more draw, maybe to grab your swords. So maybe that's what we should be doing. Drop the bows, drop the Robin engine. Go after some grab your swords since now you have access to remove this un this source of uninkability and that one. So now you can afford grab your sword. Uh, play the uh, beast tragic hero. So you have access to tragic hero and a whole new world as draws. You can drop the big Robins, which Honestly, didn't do very much, um, especially when their purpose is quest to do one extra ping with the Robin's bow. Our, it's really our two and three drop turns that felt a little bit weak, and we fell behind on board. So we're dying to be prepared into just huge control. And due to the nature of the deck, it's kind of what we expect. This deck isn't built to just generate advantage and try to counteract a be prepared style ruby amethyst deck uh, that's a match a matchup that we should just kind of concede our deck is bad against we should still play the game but let's not try to beat that matchup with this deck this deck is meant to kind of punish all of these decks that can't interact with characters really well or some of these more aggressive strategies so i think we need to shore up the offense earlier on against these most aggressive these more aggressive strategies have that grab your sword at the ready so at least we know that we have very strong matchups against aggro uh, some gimmicky stuff against mid-range and we're gonna lose against control that that's just what this type of deck will do uh, but overall it, it was fun to try the the gimmicks uh, it's an okay deck to play, and I hope that you've enjoyed the gameplays as much as I have playing the deck. So again, thank you for watching the video. I wish you all a great day. Don't forget to like the video and leave a comment down below, and I will see you next time.